Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and I am so excited to have my phone back. <laughs> if you're new to my channel and you've only seen the last few videos, you hopefully will notice a dramatic difference in the quality of this video because I have had to film the last few videos on an old camera that I used to film on when I first started my channel and um, my phone has been broken for about a month and I was finally able to get it fixed. I didn't get to pick it up until Friday of Booktubeathon, so I missed all the video challenges. I was going to film them on my old camera and I filmed the first one on Monday and for some reason my computer just wasn't cooperating. I don't know, maybe I have too many videos saved on my computer. It just wouldn't save and I just had to give up on the idea of doing video challenges because by the time I got my phone back on Friday, it was practically time for Booktubeathon to be over. But what I didn't do in video challenges for Booktubeathon, I made up in reading challenges. I did not read everything I said I was going to read for the specific challenges, but I I think I finished all the challenges for the most part. Uh, I, I substituted a few things in that were, wouldn't have been my top choice. Um, but I finished 13 books during the I mean during the week of Booktubeathon. So let me quickly go through what I read and what counted for each challenge. I'm gonna not be able to talk too much about each book because I don't have much storage space left on my phone. I'm gonna have to go through now that my phone is back and uh, and delete some stuff. So uh, anyway, I will do what I can. And so the, for the 13 books that I read during Booktubeathon, uh, five of them were romance, four of them were middle grade, two of them were self-help on audio, and uh, two of them were graphic novels that I read in print. And most of the romance and middle grade were audio uh, with a couple of exceptions. So um, let's go through these. First let me tell you what counted for each challenge and um, we'll just go from there. So the first challenge was to flip a coin to see what you would read first. Now you may have noticed that my little butternut squash family has grown. I showed you my papa butternut squash for my Booktubeathon TBR and on Monday, the first day of Booktubeathon, I went on an adventure. I went to a library book sale and then from there I went on over to another town that I haven't been to in ages where they have a big flea market every Monday and I found these adorable little butternut squashes there for 50 cents a piece. So I bought four of them and they're so cute and uh, I, I did a few other uh, adventurous things that day and uh, came home and like I said tried to film my day one challenge video and it just didn't happen so I just kept reading and um, the first for my coin toss I had the choice of one butternut series or the other the uh, what won the coin toss was the Butternut Lake series by Mary McNear, and what didn't win the coin toss was the um, Butternut Creek series by Jane Myers Perrine. As it turns out, I just went ahead and read all four of these books during Booktubeathon, and since Booktubeathon has been over, I have read the third book in the Butternut Creek series because there's only three, and I just went ahead and finished up that trilogy, and I plan to go right on and read book 2.5 novella, which is... Um, uh, an ebook, I've got it checked out from Hoopla, and then the next audiobook I already have checked out too. There's six books currently in this series, counting the novella, and then um, there's another one coming out the, later this year. So uh, both of these are series that I thoroughly enjoyed. Now I will say that um, I gave both of these books, Butternut Summer and Up Butternut Lake, I would rank them for butternuts. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed them. Um, what I appreciated about this series and this author, they are basically romance books and I like the fact that the author left most of the details to your imagination. She gave you the stories of the relationships and the family drama and left the sexy parts to your imagination. There was, was definitely you know, it was definitely there, but I didn't have to know all the details, so that was good. And uh, I, I, I loved them. I thought they were great. So then the first book of the Butternut Creek series, The Welcome Committee of Butternut Creek, I also rated it for butternuts. I would say that this series, even though it is classified as Christian fiction, it's technically not Christian fiction in the truest sense of the word in that... I didn't really see a big underlying evangelical message running through the book like I do in other true Christian fiction books. However, I would say they're very clean, just good clean fun. The uh, main character is a minister of a Christian church 
and the story t centers around him and his you know congregation and the people in the community and, and it, they're just super so the next book the matchmakers of butternut creek i absolutely loved and i gave it and the third book the wedding planners of butternut creek five butternuts definitely ranked them right up there loved them all i would read that i would read these again they're super cute and i love them so i am really glad that i got those done now i mentioned that i read five romances during the book tubathon week and that didn't count the third one of the butternut creek series i didn't read it until after book tubathon was over but right at the beginning of book tubathon i still had maybe 100 pages left to go in my long tall texas heartthrob by Geraldine dawson i picked up this one and um, the one before it in a two book series because I learned recently that Geraldine Dawson is actually Emily March and these earlier books that are written under the name Geraldine Dawson are actually somehow related to the Eternity Spring series that Emily March is currently writing. So um, I went ahead and picked these up. I'll tell you more about these on the um, on my wrap up for the Summer Romance book bingo. Okay, then I read four middle grade books. I finished The Kingdom Keepers 3, Disney and Shadow. I had hoped to read this during Tome Topple. I didn't get to it. I started it right after Tome Topple and, um, well, well, maybe a week later. And uh, I was still finishing it up during the first couple of days of Booktubeathon. I did finish it by the beginning of the month or by the end of July. And uh, this didn't wow me. It's the longest of the of the series. The best parts were the parts that took place in the Wonders of Life Pavilion at Epcot, which has been closed for several years. But there were parts where uh, the kids had to sneak in there to try to find someone who'd been kidnapped and everything. And it was fun, you know, remembering the attractions in that pavilion, like Body Wars and um, Cranium Command and stuff like that that uh, uh, that I loved. Uh, um, the Wonders of Life Pavilion, I think really is my favorite pavilion at Epcot and it's such a shame that it's been closed all these years. I really wish they would reopen it but I don't know that there's any plans to. So um, anyway, I only ranked this one three butternuts. Uh, it just didn't wow me. Then I read two graphic novels. This one, A Wrinkle in Time by Hope Larson. Uh, of course, the original Wrinkle in Time is written by Madeline Langle, but Hope Larson adapted this for graphic novel and did the artwork. Um, I only gave this one also three butternuts. Uh, I watched the movie and I read this graphic novel. Um, I thought the movie was a little short. I really loved the casting, though. That was my favorite part of the movie. And they left out the parts about um, Ant Beast. They didn't do that whole section, which was disappointing. Uh, it is in, the, in this book, though. Uh, I thought the story was very well done but I wasn't a big fan of the artwork in general and I didn't really like how the characters looked I don't know I, I just picture them as being a little more attractive than how they're portrayed here so I don't know it just my opinion then the other graphic novel that I read was while wearing a hat I think I actually did um, I read this book and I did three of the most hated challenges the last three years in Booktubeathon. <laughs> so this year the most hated challenge that so many people said, I'm not doing that, uh, was to wear a hat. I also read it outside. That was last year's hated challenge. And then the year previous there was a challenge to read a book um, and never let go of it while you're reading it. You have to hold it the whole time. So I picked a nice short graphic novel and um, I, and I did all three of those all three of those things while reading this book. Now, my, this was one that my husband had checked out from the library because of a library challenge that he's doing for our local library. And uh, I thought, well, while he's got it checked out, I may as well read it. I didn't remember anything about Beowulf except the fact that I did read it during uh, in high school. But I didn't remember anything about it. And it, it was okay. It's bloody. So, you know, I only gave it three butternuts as well. The, the artwork I thought was, was fine, though. Then I read two self-help books. I listened to them on audio. I don't have either of those. One of them was by Sandra Felton. Uh, she's most known for her uh, Messies manual. She is um, referred to as the organizer lady. So I listened to uh, the book by her that I listened to was called... Um, five days to a clutter-free home or something like that. I had listened to it before and um, and I liked the approach. So I just was kind of looking for something to 
motivate me. I On my original TBR, I said I was going to read an organizing book that I had in print. I didn't have time to get to that. So I actually listened to two different organizing books. And uh, one of those was by Sandra Felton. And the other one... I absolutely loved, and I'll show you a picture of it. I've got it here on my Kindle. I listened to it on audio, and now I have the print book checked out. You probably can't really see it. Eh, it's not really going to see. It is called um, Having a Martha Home the Merry Way by Sarah May. And, of course, Martha and Mary refers uh, refer to the biblical characters and uh, Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and she wanted to just, you know, absorb everything he was teaching. And Martha was the one who was busy in the house doing all the preparations. So in this book, um, it, I love it. It's got a, it's a 31 day plan and each day you've got a devotional, which is your Mary challenge. And then you have a Martha challenge, which is some type of household chore and so now um i have the print book checked out and i started it let me let you see it again i started it on monday of this week right now today i'm filming this on wednesday and i did the first challenge which the first martha challenge which was to um clean your kitchen like all the counters and 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 really do a good you know a good cleaning and so i did that and uh my kitchen sparkled, you know, clean your sink and all that stuff, which is kind of a fly lady thing too. Then uh, day two was to um, clean out your refrigerator and your microwave. So I got my refrigerator cleaned yesterday. I forgot to do the microwave. Then I had to go to work, my theme park job. So today's challenge was to clean and scour your cabinets and your floors. So I did my microwave too. And I have to share this tip with you. Uh, the tip for cleaning your microwave is to put... Um, Put some water with some sliced up lemons in your microwave for two to three minutes. I didn't have lemon, so I just put lemon juice. And I put them in for three minutes. I just put some lemon juice in some water. And when you take it out, it just wipes sparkling clean. It's so great. So if you've never tried that, I recommend that. So I am going to do this. I am really, really enjoying this. Now, I gave the audiobook four butternuts, but the print book where you can just sit down with it and appreciate the, the devotionals and the, the peace of uh, the author, she, just her gentle, she uses the term gentle homemaking. And um, uh, I don't know, it, it was just great. Now, actually, you know what? Now that I said that, I think I did give the audiobook five, five uh, stars or five butternuts. Um, yeah, because the narrator had such a nice, peaceful voice that you would swear that that was the author herself talking. And so I kind of thought it might be at first, but it wasn't. So it definitely was narrated very well. I'll put all that below, who the name of the narrator and all that. Uh, so I loved uh, I loved this book, and I'm, I'm going through it daily now uh, to finish out the month or to finish 31 days. So I did go through... And um, and went through the uh, the ebook and I wrote down each challenge so that way I know what's coming up and I can plan for it and make sure I have the cleaning supplies and all that. But uh, each day has its devotional and and the cleaning chore and all that, so it's really awesome. All right, what else? Um, oh, my uh, other middle grade books I forgot to tell you about three Sunshine State books. I'll talk about these more when I do my Sunshine State wrap up. The Forest of Wonder, the first book in the Wing and Claw series by um, Linda Sue Park. I ranked this one four butternuts. And then the next two, I gave five butternuts. So I'll put my Papa Butternut back up there. I am, I reread short. I listened to it on audio and I had only rated it four stars on audio. Went back and read it in print, fully appreciated it so much more. Wrote down a whole page of quotes. It's so good. Uh, it is by Holly Goldberg Sloan. I'll tell you more about it in a future video. And then I thoroughly enjoyed Restart by Gordon Corman. It's about memory loss and, um, and second chances and starting over and all of that. So uh, I loved both of these, especially I gave them both five butternuts. So my camera is just about to run out of memory. And uh, and that's it for a book two -a -thon. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a great time. I wish I could have done the video challenges, but 
there's always next year, I hope. <laughs> and uh, I'll have lots more videos coming up soon, book hauls, um, my uh, Goodreads group announcement, and, and things like that. Uh, I'm going to be starting some read-alongs there on the Goodreads group, and uh, some other wrap-ups that I've already mentioned coming up soon. So that's all for this video. I hope you are having a great day, reading a good book, and God bless you.